The creation of the universe in the Big Bang, evolution of life over billions of years, and God. Can you believe in all three? Is science compatible with spirituality? Can you have spirituality without any religion? Can there be a purpose for the universe, a purpose for your life? The answer to all these questions is yes. A discovery has emerged in astrophysics over the past two decades that the universe has a number of properties that are just right for life to evolve. The strength of the gravitational force, the strength of the nuclear force that powers the sun, the amount of dark matter and dark energy. These and several other key properties could have been vastly different than they are. Instead, they are amazingly just right to be conducive to life. Most scientists prefer to believe that our universe only appears to be tailor-made for life. For this, you have to assume that there must be trillions and trillions of other universes, maybe even an infinite number, that are vastly different from ours. We could never exist in those kinds of universes. So, of course, we find ourselves in our just right universe. We couldn't be alive anywhere else. That does not explain everything. You still have to believe in the pre-existence of quantum fluctuations or inflation fields capable of creating universes with random properties, universes that arise purely by chance. It is logically possible, but the end result is a multiverse of universes without any purpose. But it is equally logical that an intelligence lies behind the Big Bang and the universe. Astrophysicist Sir James Jeans wrote that the universe appears more like a great thought than like a great machine. And Sir Fred Hoyle, the cosmologist who coined the term Big Bang, stated that the universe looked like an obvious fix. In other words, not just an accident, but the product of an intelligence. What if the laws governing the universe really are the ideas of a great intelligence, one that exists beyond space and time? This would imply that there is more to reality than the physical world, more than just the things you can see with a microscope or a telescope. Can you be a rational person and believe in the possibility that there are other realities that lie beyond our current science? Max Planck, the father of quantum theory, wrote that there are realities apart from our sense perceptions. And Sir Arthur Eddington, the astrophysicist who made Einstein famous by testing general relativity, wrote about, in his words, science and the unseen world. Eddington was a great scientist, but he was also a mystic. And throughout the ages, mystics have reported experiencing more than just the physical world. And so have millions of ordinary people who at some point in their lives have experienced something extraordinary, a glimpse of other realities. So imagine an infinite intelligence beyond space and time, an intelligence with infinite potential. What would such an intelligence do with infinite potential? The answer may be to turn potential into experience. Create a universe in which life forms can arise. Let evolution create all sorts of new and different life forms. Then let the consciousness of the infinite intelligence enter into those life forms and experience physical reality. That may be the purpose of the universe. That may be the purpose of our lives and that of every other creature in the cosmos, to create experience where there was merely potential. If that is true, you are a manifestation of this intelligence. You are a tiny flame of the bonfire that is God, creating God's experience with your life. Whether this is correct, or whether the universe is one of trillions and trillions that arise purely by chance, with no rhyme or reason, is beyond resolution, beyond proof. Both views are equally defensible. But you can, if you want, believe in both science and God, and a universe with a purpose. And the new biology, which is now recognized, and, 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 and here's, let me just, let's get the name so we get, we know, I can use the word then. Uh, what we're teaching in school is called uh, genetic control, and literally that says, control by genes. That's genetic control. And this is what is being taught in, in schools today, in medical schools. Absolutely. It's in every textbook. Every textbook. You pick it up. And, and it's fun because the principal belief behind this, this genetic control is actually called in the textbooks. This is just, this is like humor because it's a cosmic joke to me. Uh, in the textbook, the belief that genes control life is referred to as the central dogma. <laughs> <laughs> And the humor about it was is that I taught this belief, which was from Francis Crick, from the guy Watson and Crick who discovered the DNA uh, in 1958. Uh, Francis Crick came up with this hypothesis, and the hypothesis is that 
genes, uh, it goes, uh, people may have heard the flow. DNA goes to RNA, goes to protein, and that is the, the flow of information in biology. So it starts with the DNA, ends with the protein, and the relevance for the protein is, just so people understand it, that the building blocks of our cells that give us our structure and our, give us all of our functions are derived from these little protein molecules, which are very complex, and maybe 150,000 or more different proteins make up a human body, so they're like um, parts. <laughs> you buy at a parts store, and cells are built out of these things. So if the parts are controlled by the DNA, then the shape of the body and all the behavior is actually predetermined in the DNA. And they called it the central dogma that genes control life, basically. And, and, and what's really interesting about it is that people don't recognize this, is that when Francis Crick came up with this hypothesis, this was already, uh, uh, people believed that was going to be the result. So when his research somewhat supported that result, they took a jump and they said, yes, this research actually supports the belief we had, and therefore they, they reinforced the belief with the central dogma that genes control life. And the fact was, it was never a scientific experiment. It was never even tested in that regard. It was already believed to be that way. So when the hypothesis came up, everybody goes, oh, yeah, that, yeah that's, that makes all the sense in the world. And so the, the, the joke is, they repeated this so many times over so many years. You know, that was like, what, 50, 60, some, 60 years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. It's been repeated for 60 years, and what happened in history is that when you repeat something for so long, at some point, every just, it's, it just becomes a fundamental rule of life. Mm -hmm. And the joke is, it was never scientifically demonstrated. It was just expected. And, and, and so the interesting part about it is now the humor is, when I got out of the system, that was the first time I actually went to the dictionary and said, central dogma, what, what is dogma actually defined as? And, and the definition of dogma is a belief based on religious persuasion and not scientific fact. And all of a sudden, I had to laugh. I, there I was, teaching medical school for all those years, and I was actually teaching religion, mm -hmm. because it was never a scientific fact, and today turns out to be absolutely incorrect. And you might say, well, well, that's interesting. No, it's like, no, this is not, like, interesting. This is culture-bending, mm -hmm. earth-changing information, and, and it's the, the, the parallel. This is a beautiful parallel, because this is the reality of it. The parallel in this new biology is what happened in 1925 when, when Newtonian physics, the concept of a material universe, ruled the world. And in 1925, physicists finally had to accept the reality that it's not a universe based on matter. It's actually a universe based on energy because the atoms are not made out of matter. They're made out of energy, so everything is made out of energy. So there you are in one day saying this is a material mechanical universe and the body is a machine and it's got chemistry in it. And then according to physics the next day, it said, well, that's an illusion. The body is actually energy and it's influenced by energy. And yet the physicists going from Newtonian physics to quantum physics, it wasn't an easy transition. I mean, if you made your whole career teaching a, of a material universe and one day wake up and say, you know, everything I taught for all those years, let's just forget that and start again. It wasn't easy. So there was a, it was a transition phase where the old thinking had to evolve, you know, leave the system and the new thinking coming in. Well, today's new biology is, is exactly the same, but it has a more profound difference for us in one sense because the, the old physics took us like from a, uh, uh, you know, a crank telephone to a cell phone, or, or, or from a steam engine to a rocket ship engine. Mm -hmm. That was the difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics. And in biology, the new biology is going to take us from a world today uh, of crisis and ill health and, uh, and a failing, a failing uh, environment and world, and take us to another level uh, of masterful control where we, in our consciousness and our experiences of life, will actually have power over our own lives and not be the victims that we were programmed to be. So to me, when people understand the nature of this and recognize how their perceptions about life, which, which we'll talk about, about beliefs about life, when they change, it actually has a biological connection through the energy field, through quantum physics, and through a new thing called epigenetic control. Remember, genetic control, control by genes. 
epigenetic control, and it turns out the mind is what's above the genes, and it's the mind that controls the genes. And when people in the world can own this, not as, well, that's a neat idea, but as a fact, then that says, well, if you want to change your life and you want to express different characters or traits, then it's incumbent upon you to know that your mind is involved with actually creating that ability, that behavior, that genetic expression that allows you to control what you want in your life. So we go from victim to master in this new biology.